morning, we've just seen the film, The Artist and the Model. And this is a press conference of the section, official section film, The Artist and the Model. And for this, we have with us the director, Fernando Trueba, and the actors and actresses, Jean Rochefort, Aida Folt, Claudia Cardinale, and Chus Lampreave. Please, can the photographers finish doing their work? Please and stop using your flashes during the press conference. And so now let's commence with the first question. Uh, who uh, wants to break the ice with the first question, please? We've got in the front row, we've got... We're not getting audio, it seems. Can please uh, the audio be solved? Okay. Is the audio... Can it be solved? Okay, let's commence with the first question. Hi, good morning. My question is for Chus Lampreave, who I admire, we admire very much. Your character is as you play a small role and you don't, not too many dialogues from the outset when you appear in the film, you fill the screen. Well, at every moment you fill the screen. In the first moment, you open your mouth to say the first dialogue. And the audience, we all laughed. How do you manage to do... Well, speaking very bad and poor French. I'm not pronouncing it very well. Yes, it seemed there was a question next door. Yes, who's the next? Go ahead, please. Hi, my question is a general question for Fernando. I know it's a project uh, from a few years back, and my question is whether you always thought to shoot the film in black and white, and why did you do it in black and white? And the other question is, it's linked to this one, why doesn't it have any music, which is quite new in Fernando's work, basically? Uh, there's a bit of music at the end, and it's a Duke Ellington uh, song. I thought it was quite, the, the way you waited the film is quite daring and it didn't have a lot of adornments, there's no moment in where we make a decision to, be, to shoot the film in black and white because that's the way it was born. So therefore it was black, black and white at the beginning, even before we wrote a, a line, in the, the first line of the script, from the origin, the film was going to be shot in black and white. So therefore there was no decision or any discussion vis-a-vis -vis black and white, shooting it in black and white. And as regards to the music, the truth is I did feel that it was a music that didn't need, a film that didn't need music, but I didn't want to make a decision beforehand. I said perhaps when I see it edited and when we start to edit it, I might think that the, music, the film needs music at a given moment. But at the end, I felt that it was unnecessary. I th just that little section at the end of Mahler's Ninth uh, Symphony, Mahler's Ninth Symphony, I thought it was a good way to finish the film, and so therefore that's why we ended up doing things as we'd foreseen it. But I never wanted it to be a decision, an absolute prior decision. I wanted it to be open to see what the film breathed and what the film asked for. From Variety, uh, your film has touched my heart. Thank you. Apart from that, I think you said that your film among other things, is about the role of art in the chaos of reality. I wonder if you could talk about that a bit. Yes, quite clearly, and that's one of the subject matters of the film. In, in the, I think Jeanne's character is a character who's going through Perhaps in that time, that expression wasn't used, but he is what now we call a Great Depression. That is to say, he's a man who has seen the First World War. He, is, he didn't think that humanity would repeat something like the First World War. And he's an elderly man, his life is finishing and he's coming to an end and he's living in what we called the free France, as it was called, the occupied, not the occupied France. And the truth is he's a man who has lost any trust or confidence in 
the human species and in his work and absolutely everything. And all of a sudden, and I, there, what I've tried to portray in the film is the moment of plenitude of a human being, a moment of plenitude which is completely unexpected when he thinks everything's finished, that life, that nothing makes sense or any possibility. All of a sudden, life erupts with Mercedes' character and he he feels and be able to he almost touches life again and to starts to work again and to be able to have a moment of of plenitude uh, so therefore i think this is what the story is saying within a dark period he tells the story of that magical moment in which one sees that life opens its way finds its way. The uh, Croce's uh, phrase, uh, well, Jeanne gave me this phrase, uh, bombarded uh, cities and almonds in flower, and that's the image that I wanted to talk of the film. Hi, good morning. I'd like to ask Fernando, could you reflect upon the artist and the craftsman? Sometimes you've uh, defined yourself as a craftsman, but this film is a reflection upon the artist in a moment, the painter, in a Rembrandt, and he said, this is a masterwork which emerges without even him proposing it. How do you address art and that that line that you go from being a craftsman to and turning into an artist? And that relationship that exists between the artist and the model, it's as if the artist vampirizes reality what uh, underlies there? No, not at all. The artist is not a vampire. What I th think, and I've always thought, uh, an artist is, can only be, come from being a craftsman. An artist has been a very humble uh, profession. He's always worked with his hands, with the way he looks at things. So therefore, I think that if you don't have that technique, that craftsmanship, the art couldn't exist. We're living in a period nowadays where in the art schools or in the fine arts schools lessons that the, 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 the students are, are told are taught to be Michel Deschamps, but they're not taught how to paint. They're not told how to get dirty, and you've got to touch the matter that you're that you want to uh, sculpture or paint more, it's more material than materialist. That is to say, it, hands play a very important role here because I don't separate art and craftsmen. Uh, it's like separating the hands from the soul. Bresson taught us that when he's in his best films, which pickpocket and ca the, the, the person condemned to death has escaped. In those two films, it demonstrated that the soul, your soul is in your hands, and especially that of an artist. The art of a painter is in his hands, not in his ideas, nor in his ideology or his theory, artistically speaking. It is in the fact that he creates something, that he does something with his hands. Um, Fernando. Fernando, congratulations on the film, and congratulations to the, all of you. We've seen that the film is dedicated, it's like a tribute to Maximo Trueba, who's also a sculptor. Is there any, Jean Roquefort, is, there, is it similar to Maximo? And for Aida, for example, it's the second time you worked with Fernando, uh, 10 years ago in the, in the Express, Shanghai Express. Uh, you seen any evolution in the change in the way Fernando Trueba is now directing? No, I wouldn't say that that the artist has to do with my brother but in a certain sense yes in the sense that he works with matter and he works uh, in the sense of the purity of uh, approaching what he does but if i dedicate myself to this quite probably well i was interested in art since i was a child and now i make films it's because i had a brother who was an artist and i always looked at him and i tried to imitate him so therefore in that sense yes that's why it's more important for me. I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't because I had a, 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 a brother who sculpted and painted and drew things and I wanted to imitate him always. Yes, Fernando progresses quite suitably. He directs me better and better every day. No, 
he it was different because I was very small when he directed me when I was a child he treated me like a little a girl actress now he treats me like an actress and it was great to be able to work with him again and to get under his orders again and to listen to him a lot and to learn so much so therefore it's been a genuine luxury and a pleasure to work with him on this film Fernando I don't know I want to ask you the question is this film made in first person the artist to a certain extent who's sculpting is that you or be it you do cinema and make films but if that's please when you make the next film and when you make it perfect and like Claudia Cardinale I would like to ask you whether you feel it's a tribute for you in this film because the artist says when the female protagonist says how was the body of your wife and she said it was the best the only one and is that a tribute to the sex symbol that you represented in the world cinematography it's called the cardinale in the past and the protagonist the leading actress you said if it's you're the second best well you're a sick would be a sex symbol of spanish cinema therefore i don't speak very good spanish For me, it has been formidable to work with uh, Treva and this film, and obviously with Jean Rochefort, who I haven't seen for many, many years. We shot Cartouche together, and here now we meet again as husband and wife. It has been extraordinary. And as regards to what you said about your remarks, and yes, and the face that Jean Rochefort said, well, the truth is, <laughs> it's quite incredible, isn't it? Claudia, Claudia was the love of my childhood, and my when I was a teenager, a teenager, that's quite clearly. And there was no, she had no competition. The question that you've asked me, well, I think that in general. I've written, I'm not sure all of them, but the majority of my films, I tend to write them in first person, albeit you're not the character, I'm not the character in this case, so you've got to write them from inside, from within the film and not from outside the film. So that doesn't mean, nevertheless, that it's autobiographic. Any film is autobiographic, even though it, it's, it's something which is very distant from you, as it's not necessary to talk about oneself. For, their to, for that comp personal component to appear. Hello, I'm Alexis Ardos from National Greek Television. Congratulations for this wonderful film. Uh, it really made everybody understand or have more questions about what art is. So I have two questions for all of you. Uh, the main character of the film um, asks, uh, tells that uh, uh, there is a reason that God exists, and he gives actually two reasons. So I need a reason from each one of you that God exists, even if you believe or not. And my second part uh, is that, um, uh, as I told before, art um, can be portrayed in a lot of ways in the film. And uh, well, the main character says that uh, Rembrandt could create art in four minutes with that small painting, but at the end of the film we realize that when we realize really what art is, we have to live. So I would like a comment about what art is for all of you. Thank you so much. Was that a question for me? For everyone? El arte. Art. Well, art is a, is, is a necessity. It's from prehistoric caves, art already existed. For a country and for a civilization without art, this would involve a civilization which would come to pieces. I, unfortunately, I'm quite old now uh, to, to have uh, been through wars. And therefore, well, that's why I, I have a certain desperate look vis-a-vis -vis the world when I look at the world before abandoning this world. This film is an encounter and it's a homage and a hymn to life. The, he, the character comes to, is getting close to death, but all of a sudden youth comes along. And so the, it also, it, it, it contributes a lot of things to that man, that old man. 
be it elements, carnal and natural or vegetable needs or the need of maintaining contact. And the need that perhaps that we have, the need of seeing and confirming that we've got to admire each other. It, and that links us to existence. And this means that we insist upon perduring and this film that I love very much there's also a pudic awakening of desire in this old man and this is something that returns um, brings back the taste for life and I think that's why the film is very important and which is and it is a work in itself how do I how can I say this it has been a continuous fresh breath of air to breathe this is what it's meant for this old man I hope that the answer was clear well the truth is that art undoubtedly is very important and plus it's something quite extraordinary in this film we can see it in this film and and you can find you can find either so that her husband can start to live and she can find that passion because art is something which is immortal and that's why art is essential for me Chus is the only person who's a painter and she's an artist by the way marvelous I've I've always liked to draw and then I studied fine arts in San Fernando in Madrid and I did I painted everything and drawing and see apart from a thumb and things that there were subjects that that were compulsory that I'm not going to talk about but the rest yes and I've always been interested I've always had friends who were artists and then in cinema there are loads of friends men and women who, who are artists but in a different manner and that's it I love to talk about art since I made this film and we talked a lot about art and one of the phrases that I can I got stuck with when I talked to Fernando was that art is a way of making life more beautiful and it's just worthwhile just because of that and then you talked about God right yes you asked a question about God I like the Genesis, uh, but I remember that Fernando, Fernando told me that for him God was Billy Wilder, and for me it's Fernando. Oh. Poor girl. No, art. I say this is a film that dealing with an artist and dealing with art it doesn't get involved in the, the issue of creation nor in in the blah 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 of art I think that it enters into the the crux of the matter of the the fact that you create something and you do something and you do it physically um, and I believe that's very beautiful Renoir is the son he said that art is doing it and that's the greatest truth that exists that is to say you don't talk about it or look at it look at it at it is to admire it it's something beautiful but art is something that is the fact of doing or making art it's not only a painting which is hangs up in a museum it's the moment in which that paint that painting started to exist and it was started to be painted and manufactured and that's something that we always forget as regards to art there was an junior Barnes wrote an article the other day to defend that their books were always going to exist even though digital books exist he, he told an anecdote of two authors uh, in the 19th century English I don't remember the names of the authors but they were English and one told the other I've got to write less and read less and live more and the other one answered not at all it's much better to read than to live it's much more fun there's more life in books than in life itself and Junior Bhavna said I don't agree neither with one or the other I said because I've never been able to separate art from life they're the same thing so therefore it's impossible 
not to confront them nor to prefer them. It makes no sense to have one where or no, with, without the other. I completely agree with this. I, and even more so in in cinema, uh, art is done with life. It's not done with words, with literature. It's not it's not done with colors like in painting. It's done with human beings like these who I've got around me here on the panel today. And these are the colors and the words with which you tell the stories. And and as Pasolini said, cinema is the language of reality. And that, how are we going to separate cinema from life? Uh, that's impossible. They're one same thing. Good morning. Congratulations to all of you. The truth is that film, I liked it very much. Something as complicated as art and life and everything that you're talking about is not easy to portray. The question is, and what artists have you used or thought of for the hands that you see that the artist is molding the body of the model or sculpting the, are there any artists that we know that have helped you to, for those scenes? Well, there have been quite a lot of artists that have had to work on the film. First is that there's been a team of painters and sculptors to prepare all of the material before shooting uh, the film. There's a team by, directed by Tomás Bañuelos, who's a sculptor, artist, uh, a teacher in f the Fine Arts uh, University. And for some of the sculptors that are a bit more known, like for example, for, for the uh, López Hermanas and Antonio López himself. And, and then when we shot we had another sculptor and painter, his French, Michel Brigand is his name, who was, were the hands of Jeanne in the film. So therefore we've had artists uh, before and during uh, the shooting of the film working with us. Hi. Good morning. Finally, we've seen a Spanish film in the last few years that, that has completely filled me. It's good, but it's also filled me. And I want to congratulate one of my idols in cinema, Jean Rochefort, who is like Barrasse, he's like Gabin, he's like Jouvert, the greatest, uh, and like Claudia. They are cinema, the truth, not art, but cinema. Aida has been very, did a very good job. And the question's for you, Fernando. I liked Aida, and Subwest, better than Ramel Boyao or reminiscences of that Jean um, beauty, beautiful liar, 1993. Are there any references with Rochefort or have you inspired or that film? Did it take out another part? But congratulations for the film. Thank you very much. Well, I think it's a, the approach is completely different, as you say. It's, it, takes another, it takes another path or we're taking another path, another direction. It's something uh, very different. It's something, uh, it's another thing. Hi, good morning. I want to congratulate you for the film. I would like to ask uh, Jeanne, what's the greatest demand that Fernando asked of you for this film? And also to Fernando Trevor, what does it mean for you to be in this festival, to be pre-selected for by our country for the uh, Oscars and and the possibility of, of going to the Academy Awards? The most difficult thing was, was that Fernando and I, before shooting, we got together, we met on several occasions, and we were able to see, and with lack of modesty, complete lack of modesty, we saw that we had a lot of things that we liked together. Well, I was under the impression uh, that I was meeting with a brother, a, ma a brother with whom I could reflect upon things. And so therefore, Everything that he said, and with that uh, regular elegance, everything that he told me was quite evident that I all, he was always right, and that even didn't bother me. So therefore, quite simply, what I did was I enthusiastically um, did what he told me because constantly he was always right in asking what he asked. We shot this film within a certain level of joy, communion and happiness and why not say it at night 
we went to sleep very satisfied with ourselves, which undoubtedly is much better than any other element that can help you to go to bed and sleep. So therefore, we were a, we were a group of people, of uh, well, the technical crew and the actors and a director, all of us who wanted to do make the same film. And, and there was a permanent osmosis there. Quite often we'd say that about films. But perhaps in this film, it's the second time within the 100 films, more or less, that I've made. But this one is perhaps one of the times in which I've worked with greatest harmony. And what Fernando has just said right now, uh, before you once again, has confirmed that I didn't... Mis it wasn't a mistake at all when I associated myself to this fantastic director who also has an enormous future before him. What you ask me these things and what it means and so on and so forth, well, I don't know. I try not to think too much about that. That is, let's say we make films and we go through all of these uh, vicissitudes and sometimes you receive awards, sometimes you get a slap in the face and that's life and that's the way it goes. It forms part of our profession and we've got to do it. We've got to be very natural uh, the way things come across in life and never, never believe what you get or the slaps in the face or the, the awards you may receive and to continue to do your work the best you can and that's it. Congratulations to all of you for this great film. Fernando has always surprises us with each of his projects. The first question is for Fernando. How do you manage... You thought about... How did you choose the cast? And all of you, how do you confront working with Fernando and the roles? For Claudia, a question for you. How can you summarize your evolution as an actress? From your when you started, you had a very sex symbol, sexy in Europe and the U.S. And now your career, how you're doing it? And Chus, what can you say about how you've evolved as an actress, which has always surprised us with every time you've appeared in Spanish cinema? I want now that I've got you in front of me. I wanted to take a full advantage that you've got us in front of me. Well, I said, well, I don't know how to explain that things, one happens after another, and for whatever reason, another thing comes out, and then another, another, another one, and then, I don't know, but I can't really explain anything much. That's a short explanation, isn't it? That's very little. I've, I've been very happy, of this. I'm very glad and happy to participate in this film and I've had the good fortune of coming into cinema, the world of cinema in magical years, so I've made 130 films many times. I had visited Spain many times, many times to shoot westerns that we shot in the south of Spain. And quite often, when uh, you come to a certain age, one stops working, but on the contrary, I continue to work, so I'm very, very happy. How did you, uh, the cast, how did you get in touch with them all? Well, I've got the feeling that uh, of not having made any decision vis-a-vis -vis casting of the film because they, they had taken the film, they, uh, when we were, st were still writing the script, so they, all of them were in my head when I wrote the script, so therefore... And then I was, had the good fortune of having them come along on the ride because sometimes you write a script thinking about an actor and an actress and then it's not, you're not lucky enough to, to get them in the project and you start to work with somebody else. And that's formidable as well. That's great. But uh, in this film, they have been in the project almost before I had written the script. So therefore, there's never been that type of decision. Now, so let's choose this, that and the other for the casting. I cross my fingers every time so that when I send them the script that they would like the script. And with what Claudia would like it, uh, or whether Jeanne would like to be the leading actor. Um, and uh, either it's written for her as well. This is a question for Fernando over here. 
the character of the German says that he's concerned about the process and the sculptor is concerned about the result. Which of the two do you like vis-a-vis -vis your film? Could you go um, and, and give some details? Sure. Well, I like the result. I'm what, what, but but I also I'm. What's important for me is also the process. Um, apart from this, one without the other doesn't exist. There's obviously sometimes in cinema we we say, well, we had a great time making this film. We had a great time. Everything went very well. It was a beautiful like uh, location shoot, but they, everything went well. But that's no interest for those people that weren't there. The people that are only interested, they're only interested in the film that you've made and whether that film moves them or interests them or whatever. And so therefore, that's what we work for. But in turn, there are films that I will remember all my life, the way, the process itself, how I made it. Because cinema, which is a collect an ensemble, a collective, uh, you don't, you don't, you don't do it on your own. You coexist with them very closely. Uh, every shoot is like a life. You don't live that again. No shoot is like another shoot. Um, so therefore, the process concerns me quite a lot. You know because. For many years now, and I repeat, and I always say the same things, but uh, I compare making a film with uh, traveling in a ship with a series of people that you've got in the crew looking for an island that you hope that you're going to find treasure there. So therefore, the, the journey and the people that tra travel in, in that journey with you and in that adventure with you, that, that, with you, that's important. In that sense, the process is important because it's your life. Uh, adventure and it forms part of your life but when you make a film what you want is to find the treasure at the end of the journey it, it, you think always according to and according to the result end result hi good morning I would like to ask Fernando Trueba because in the film what drew my attention was the calmness of the character to confront the end of his life and the calmness of the model to not move. How do you think time, available time, may have an influence upon the creation of, of a work of art? Now we're always in a hurry. Do we, do we need to stop and to look at things or for inspiration to arrive to us? Well, I think so. I think that one of the things that I think that the film has is that it asks you to stop and to look at things. We live in a, per in a moment, in a period in which nobody stops, where people don't read something that has ten lines, because a ten lines is, is almost like a doctoral thesis. So imagine right, trying to read War and Peace. So therefore what I think that what it, the film does claim is that slowness, stop to look at things, that's what I mean, to stop time, to be able to think for more than 10 seconds upon one thing and to look at something. And that's what the film claims. And therefore, in art and in life, in our relationships with people, that's of fundamental importance as well. That is to say, to give uh, give time to each thing, to find make sense of a t period in which everything is accelerated, it seems, and even a word even takes a long time. We live in a moment of time where a, a word is summarized in a letter, one single letter. And that's a, a K is a Q, or that's a what is just a W, for example. So therefore, let's enjoy, let's go back and enjoy what's dense, what takes a long time, what's deep, and what requires some time and an effort to do so. Because only in that will you find we have, do we find pleasure? The pleasure of speed only exists if you're a Formula One driver, like Manuel de Oliveira, with which Claudia is going tomorrow to Porto for the premiere of her latest film, where she's 104 years old, it seems. But, but that's what I'm saying. They say, my, I'm all the contrary to our time. They say, I only read things that take a long time to read. Not read anything that, that it's, it's too short to read or takes too little time to read. A question for Fernando. In your film, there's a parachutist who jumps out of a plane with books and there's a German soldier who's writing an essay upon an artist. 
is there a claim of culture in times of turmoil? I don't know whether that's a wink to the current time, but is it there for other reasons as well? No, no, it's not a wink at anything. Basically, it's these are characters. These are characters, and all the characters. There's also a man who works with Marvel. We don't know whether he had books at home or at home, or he's never read one. Neither do we know that the Aida's character is a character that culture was she was interested before the adventure of the film and this encounter probably not but that's the way it is that character of the German the German's character has a lot to do with characters of that time and I liked to bring out the German officer who is really an art teacher he's not a bad guy in a film where the Germans are normally are always the bad guys in the movies. So, and in fact, there were great lovers of art in Germany, people like Renoir, Renoir who was a great, who was lo in love with French art, the post-impressionism like Count Kessler or, and so on. These people were Germans and they lived all time, everyone, all the time in France, uh, backing and supporting and defending the work of the uh, French artists. Someone, I think I forgot, didn't answer because I don't remember, someone asked about artists that inspired me for this character. There were many. Obviously, there's one that, from which I've taken more than one thing, which is Aristides Mayol the Catalan French sculptor but there are many things in the film from Picasso, Monet, Cezanne, even David Hockney with which the film has that's why he appears in the credits uh, oh, sorry in the acknowledgments any further questions if that's not the case thank you very much to all of you